I'm Richard Rowe. Um, I am the founder of Open Learning Exchange, which is a social benefit organization looking at how we can reach the 1.8 billion children around the world who currently have no access or very little access to education, uh, and let, let alone technology. And the issue is uh, how do we use technology and how do we use what we've learned about learning in order to reach those children so that they can participate in the future of the world uh, which is changing very rapidly. I'm going to frame the problem of uh, that we're in fact as a as a human society we're faced with a huge number of problems but each one of them the solution of which requires an educated population. We're not going to solve these problems without a large number of us, a large proportion of us, being able to participate in the solutions. And the challenge is going to be how do we reach those who are currently so deeply marginalized from the rest of society? And that's at least 90 percent of humanity right now. Um, it's easy to say, well, technology is a kind of simple solution to this, but as we know, it's much more complicated than that. Technology needs to be a part of a more systemic change in the entire system. And we need to look at what is possible and not, not be depressed by the range of problems that we have, but by what the possibility is of moving forward. We've learned a lot about what it, the kind of thing that takes for human beings to thrive. We know that they need to have a sense of agency, a sense of power. We know that they, need to, they, they need to have a sense of meaning in what they do and a connection with each other. Isolation is one of the cruelest forms of punishment for human beings. And so those things, it seems to me, need to be the foundation of any educational system that we have that, in fact, uh, works more toward a broader participation in the learning process so that every one of us is both a teacher and a learner. We don't divide the world into these are teachers and these are learners and they have different responsibilities. We all have the responsibility for both learning for all of our lives and for teaching through all of our lives. Even the youngest children can themselves be teachers. So I'm talking tomorrow about how we transform what we think about, the way we frame the entire educational system so that we move from a sense of teachers and educators to a sense of all of us being learners and teachers at the same time. A big challenge for, for, for ICT, for Information Communications Technology, is how to align that technology with the shifts that we know and what we, mean, what we need for human learning. How to move from an isolated kind of one-to-one -one or one-to-many model to a many-to-many -many model where in fact technology supports the participation of all of us in that learning process. Many-to-many -many and participation is the way things are going. Historically, education and in fact all of learning has been a kind of a top-down. The expert informs the non-expert about what is true. And what we know now is that in fact the, the very creation of knowledge is much more distributed than ever before and that we need to move to learning models that are more participatory, more many-to-many -many models. How does technology do that so that we connect ourselves not simply from a single source of knowledge or an encyclopedia or something where you go to and find out what is true but in fact a world in which knowledge is iterative, which is continually evolving, which is never any final answer to any question, which requires all of us to be participants in. That's the big challenge for technology. How to move from this is a tool that I use for my learning to how do we move to a place where it is a shared process where we are all participating in the knowledge creation and the learning process. Interesting, entrepreneurs, the, the kind of people who are thinking about change, one of the big challenges for entrepreneurs is it's fairly easy to come up with these ideas that we're talking about. Institutional change, however, can be a very slow and painful process. One of the things entrepreneurs need to understand is that change is experienced as loss by most people. It's a painful process and letting go of that particularly which has been seen to be successful or which is familiar in the past and accepting the new ideas is the hard part. It's easy to come up with some really great ideas. Getting them to scale so that they're not just a little spot here or a little spot there, a little castle on the hill, 
getting the scale so that we reach 1.8 billion children who today are not having access, or the 7 billion of us, the vast majority of whom do not have access to technology, do not have access to even food for that matter. That's the challenge. How do we take our wonderful, great ideas that we've developed and make them scale so that they really transform our society as a whole and not just a corner of it?